YouTube. How are you guys doing today? I hope you're having a great day. I'm doing fine here also. I was looking at my calendar and I realized that I haven't done a Magic Lantern series in a while. So today we are going to delve into that with our 6D. Uh, we're going to be going over the display menu on the 6D today or in Magic Lantern. It's kind of short but uh, it does have some good features to it. So let's delve right in and see what we got. Okay, I got my usual setup here. I got my uh, iPhone on my DJA tripod here. I got my camera set up for the 6D, so let's go ahead and delve, get this party started. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start up the camera here. Let the sensor clean itself there. Go into the trash can, which brings up the menu for Magic Lantern. And I already have it on display because I was messing around with it earlier today. And the first one that we have here is the Live View Digic Peaking. Now with this one, what the focus peaking does, it derives it from the digic processor, not the CPU itself. So once we turn that on, you can do slightly sharper edge image and edge chroma. I'm going to do it at slightly sharper and go into the live view so to see what we're getting there. And you can't see much difference in the edge one. I'll see if I can do a little focus on here. And you can kind of see a little variation on the edge of the image. Uh, so let me go out of that. And the real difference you see is in the next one, the edge image. So we'll go out of there. Go back into the live view. And then right there you can see it goes into like a black and white or gray image. And what you see on the screen itself is the very edge of the uh, subjects. And as I go out of focus, they go away. And if I put it in focus, it brings it back to where you can see the outlines of all the bottles and stuff that are in that image. And then the final one, if we go back into there, select Edge plus Chroma. Get out of there, go to Live View. And you can still see it has a similar to what you saw before with the Edge, but now you can see coloring within the image as far as the bright reds and stuff like that. I'll go out of focus, back into focus, and there that's what you have for the uh, digit peaking, uh, focus peaking, so let me go ahead and get out of that. Go back to our, turn that off for now. The next one here is the live view brightness, and you got a couple choices. You got normal, high, and very high. I'll go to very high right there, just to show you that there's quite a difference between the two. You can see that it's a lot brighter, uh, kind of lose some of its contrast also. And usually if you can hit the trash can, you can not go in there. You can see you can scroll through there. You got very high, normal, high, and very high. So let's go back to normal. Get out of Magic Lantern and Live View. And then the next one is very similar with the, as far as the display brightness. You got your contrast here. Right now we're at normal. I'll go up to zero. Get out of that. Live View. And you can see it's the, the contrast on that is very, very low. I'll go into Live Contrast on there. You can see it a little bit as you go back and forth on here. Very low, low, normal high contrast and very high contrast. So those are your options on that particular setting. Let's go back to the live view saturation. This one works very similar as the other ones. I'm just going to go keep it at normal and go into live view. I'm going to select the magic lantern, hit the set button, and now you can see as I scroll through them, very high saturation, boost on white balance adjustment, it does a grayscale, a low saturation, and then back to normal saturation. Now you can probably stay in this screen and go between all those other ones, but I like to back out of live view because sometimes the screen gets a little funky. So. Now in the next one, the Live View Display Gain, you have, uh, if I go into that menu, you have six uh, options there, and those are the exposure values that you can uh, select within your range. 
And what I did is I actually selected number five and I went into the, both of my bathrooms because that's only really complete darkness that I have in my house at this moment because it's daytime. And this is the image that I picked up uh, when I was in the first one. It's just a picture on the wall of my uh, bathroom that's a little Chinese symbol. And I was uh, able to see on the screen when I was going to take a picture, I was able to see well enough to focus it fairly well and that's the image that came out and then I went into the other bathroom and I focused on the uh, bath towel rack I uh, did the same thing same number five uh, exposure value and that's what I came up with that one so that is uh, what that will do for you as far as the uh, display gain uh, the actual display you see on your screen will be very very grainy if I go and do it right now because we are in uh, light it's going to be very bright. It almost blows it out because uh, it's so bright in this area. But in complete darkness I was able to see well enough uh, to actually focus on the image that I wanted to see in the picture. So we're going to go ahead and turn that back off. Next one is the clear overlays. Uh, that's uh, when you're using your global draw and all your other features on your display. Uh, you can shut those off so you can see your full image which will help you compose your image or uh, take a picture better and I'll put that on half shutter for now go back out of there go into live view and as you can see I have all my displays I got the 50 millimeter and shooting raw with a large JPEG image and as I go down and push the shutter halfway down to focus on my image you can see that all the images and uh, information that was in the display disappears and comes back when I release it. And then as I go ahead and take the picture, obviously it reviews it. And then it brings it back once after you're done reviewing it. So that's how that would work. Uh, it gives, gives you other options. You can do it when it's idle. It will take away the displays. Uh, it will take it away always or when you're just recording when you're in like movie mode. And these are still things that only occur when you're in live view, so you do have to keep that in mind. The next one as we move down is deep fishing. That's a preview straightened image from fisheye lenses. I don't have a fisheye lens so I can't put, that on, put it on there to show you how quite that works. But it does give you two options of the reticulinear and the panini one. And that would be for the deep fishing. And as we move on down to anamorphic, uh, those are lenses which I don't have one of those either. Uh, basically that stretches the image vertically on the center of the camera. And then if we go into those, it does give you different options for ratios that you can select. Uh, like I said, I don't have a lens for that, so I cannot show you how that quite works. I'm going to try to get one when we delve into the settings a little more deeper later on. But for now, that is the setting for anamorphic. And then once we go into advanced settings, you can fine tune as far as screen layout. You can do it uh, different ratios, 3, 2, 16, 10, 16, 9. You can have it bottom or under. Let me go ahead and set that up. Go into live view. So now you have both underneath. And if I go back in there, I'll do a 16.9. You probably won't see much difference in that one. Yeah, it brings them in a little bit closer because it is a different ratio from what your lens sees on the display. So let me go ahead and go back into there. I'll set it back to my normal 3.2 setting. Color scheme. That's the schemes that you see on these display itself. You got bright gray, dark gray, red, and dark green. So if you want to play with the colors that you see as far as your menu on there, that's what you'll see there. Image position, normal. You can see as I move down to plus 8 and plus 16 pixels, it does move it down in the display itself. And the same with negative 16 and negative 8. It moves it up and down. That typically what they're saying is it's easier for you to see the image when you're in difficult angles for your display so that would help you out there. Up and upside down mode obviously is the upside down mode. Uh, if you're needing to shoot at 
such a weird angle that you have your camera upside down and you still need to see what is going on on the display that's what you would use so that's basically on and off live view crazy colors I'll do a swap uh, UV go back out of there go into live view and that's what you would see as far as uh, swap the UV um, what was brown is now blue if I take a quick picture here it will show me in my preview that's what that image looked like and then once you get out of the preview there you can see that uh, the colors that were kind of reddish and brown are turning like a blue so let me get out of live view there back in advanced settings and then the uh, extreme chroma is very similar to the other one it's just wacky colors like it says on the uh, just on the menu part there it's just some crazy colors and it, your camera won't actually record those color colors so why you would want to do it is beyond me but uh, on the last and final one here is force HDMI to VGA and that's this force in a low resolution 720 by 480 on HDMI displays so that will get you the option to set that out to your TV or your display. So we'll leave that off. We'll go back to regular. So that is it for the display menu and the Magic Lantern on my Canon 6D. I had fun playing with the, some of the options. The, the one that I did in the complete dark that was interesting. Uh, being able to move around the display in different colors and stuff that was kinda nice but uh, not necessarily something I would use a lot. And then the clearing of overlays, I thought that was nice as far as being able to clear those out so I could see the composition of the picture that I was taking a little bit better. So those are the options. Well, we'll probably play with those in the future with some other menu items. But until then, I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to subscribe and like below. Uh, share this if you would like to. Uh, I'm getting close to uh, 100 subscribers, which is really good for me. I, I enjoy doing this for you guys. So I hope to reach that peak real soon, and I will see you next time. Have a good one, guys.